All right, hey guys, Jeremy Ward here from Oatlands Golf Club, and I am going to do a, I'm gonna do a review of the 2022 Masters Champions Golf Swing. Uh, Mr. Scotty Scheffler, he is the number one player in the world right now, and he seems to be winning every golf tournament that he starts, so he must be doing something good in his golf swing. So um, whilst I'm gonna to talk to you and just, you know, just give you a little bit of a wrap up of what we're gonna chat about here, just thought I would play his golf swing two or three times just to give you an idea. This is the seventh hole at Augusta. Um, it is a par four dog leg to the right. Um, and he did what he did most of the week where he played a little baby fade up the middle of the fairway, um, which doesn't get himself into any trouble whatsoever. So before we start, Scotty Scheffler and his coach have built a golf swing here, um, which has eliminated the left side of the golf course which means that it is very rare that you will see Scotty Scheffler miss a fairway left or miss a green left. Um, they have developed a golf swing, which is basically designed to hit little baby fades, which he has done in this swing video here. Um, and if he's ever gonna miss a shot, which he's gonna do inevitably, um, the ball he knows is gonna miss right. Now, when you're playing professional golf, um, being aware and understanding where your miss is, is a huge advantage. Um, and past Masters Champions, I mean, you think about Sergio Garcia, he was exactly the same. Uh, he played these little pull fades. Um, Dustin Johnson, when he won it, <coughs> excuse me, he did exactly the same thing. So it's playing these little fades, eliminating the left-hand side of the golf course, uh, which may, makes the game a lot, um, you know, significantly easier particularly when you're putting and chipping as well as these guys do. So if we just start in the setup position, so he is set up for a fade. And the reason um, I know this is if we draw a line on his shoulders, okay, that's the wrong one. Good start. Let's go back. If we draw a line on his shoulders there, the you know, his shoulders are you know, set up slightly open. So if we just get to, the, get to the point where he's about to pull the trigger, you know, you can see there that his shoulders are just a tiny bit open. Now we get rid of that line there. I really like his setup position. If we draw a line from his underarm or his armpit down, typically goes to just the front of his shoe, which is really good. He's using his height to his advantage. Um, and you know, there's not a whole lot going on there. He's so perfectly balanced. You can see it in his feet. You know, that area down there, his feet are stuck to the ground. and. You know, there's, if you try to push him over in that position there, you're not gonna, you're gonna really struggle to do that. So if we come back to P2, which is when the club is parallel to the ground, this position here I really love. Now, this is just a mod, to me, is just a modified version of what Adam Scott looks like, you know? Um, and Adam Scott's got one of the best goal swings um, in the world. You know, his arms, his shoulders, his rib cage are all working together in sync, um, and his belt buckle is working at the same rate um, as his arms and his chest. If we go all the way to the top of his golf swing and pause, so when we get to the top here, I mean, this is a phenomenal position. Uh, it's super strong, super athletic. Again, to me, at the top of that golf swing there, I get a little bit of like Ernie Els in that and a little bit of Adam Scott, but that ball to me just does not look like it's gonna ever go left. Um, now, this position here, yeah, it's probably unrealistic to think that the rest of us can get to this position because, you know, we only play maybe once or twice a week and we have nine to five jobs. Um, but, you know, ideally, this is where we would like to be if we were practicing and stretching and working out um, seven days a week like the rest of these guys. So when the club comes back down to impact position, now, again, I will talk about the um, the elephant in the room, which is the his back foot, his right foot. But if we get to impact position there, again, the key things that we're looking at here is his belt buckle and sort of waistline and his chest or rib cage area. Those two are in sync, right? So they're turning at the same rate. His hips aren't going faster than his chest and his chest is not going faster than his hips. So if you combine those things together with the amount of power and speed that these guys have got, you know, it's a recipe for, uh, some, for some pretty good ball striking. Now, the only way that if Scotty is ever gonna hit the ball a mile left is if he's in this position here and he flips his hands over. And at this, you know, at this elite level, it's very rare that that happens. So awesome setup, uh, sorry, awesome impact position. If we keep playing this through and keep coming, keep going, keep coming, again, we're not gonna talk about the right foot. If we pause at that position there, again, it looks a whole lot like Adam Scott. 
you know, really good strong finish. Everything's through to his right, uh, through through to his left side. We can see the back of his, the bottom of his right shoe. You know, everything looked really good and really balanced there. Now, let's talk about that uh, that right foot or that back foot. So, we bring the club back here. We get all the way to the top. Now, keep in mind, this is the shoe that we're looking at. This is the foot we're looking at. The foot hasn't uh, hasn't moved, hasn't moved, hasn't moved, hasn't moved, still hasn't slipped. He's made contact with the ball and his right foot and left foot look pretty normal, you would agree. So everything looks completely normal there, right? It isn't until after impact position where his right foot slides out of the way. So we keep coming there. Now, now his right foot starts to move, okay? Now, this is well after impact position. So ultimately, really, who, who cares? So he's going to hit the ball and then... After he's hit the ball, he's going to finish his follow through. And then if we look back down at that circle, you know, his foot's back to where it should be. So that sliding foot, I wouldn't worry too much about it. I heard a thing, uh, I think it was on a podcast where he was talking to his coach. His coach has been the same guy since he was seven years old. They've not once tried to address it or try to change it. So we're all going to have these little unique things in our goal swing, um, you know, that sometimes, you know, obviously there's going to be technical things that we've got to change in our goal swing, but sometimes it's, um, it's just worth leaving it alone. So we'll play this all the way through. I hope you enjoyed that. And uh, congratulations to Scotty for being the 2022 Master Champion.